we have a brand new hobby. Well, it's really not a new hobby. It's an old hobby with a brand new twist, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We've been modeling and preserving uh, for really our entire marriage. Yes, we, we have, and, and even when we were little kids, our, oh, that's yeah. where we got yeah. it from. We've, we've uh, acquired that uh, interest from our, both of our parents, and we borrowed a uh, harvest dry, uh, freeze dryer from our daughter Ellie. She's got a, a video up there showing She us thinks we stole it from her. We didn't. <laughs> we've had a great time uh, for the last about, we've been doing it for about six weeks now, and we've done a lot of different things. We haven't done everything that we've wanted to do, but we've done a lot. Uh, Saltwater taffy, apple slices, carrots, uh, cheese, uh, chicken, onions, uh, ham, a lot of eggs, and of course we had to do some skittles. But uh, on average, uh, it, this has been so easy. I mean, it's really easy. We, Ellie, has the medium size harvest right has four trays, they are seven and a half by 18, I believe. And it takes about a half hour to prep your food, you know, whether it's, you know, chicken or celery or carrots or uh, salt water taffy or whatever. It, 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 on average, about a half hour to prep it and put it on the plate on the, on the four yes. trays. You put it in the freeze dryer, uh, you start it and you walk away. And that's it. Everything is automatic, whether you're doing, uh, saltwater taffy, which has very little to no moisture in them. That takes about 10 hours uh, to do, where the, the celery and the onions, the celery, they took about 34 hours to do just because of the high moisture content in them. You got a better system there? Yeah, I line them up so I don't have to sit there and work myself around them. Remember, you're too old. You do not want to pull fillings out. No, well, that's why we're dehydrating them because then you can pop them in your mouth and they just melt. But what's nice about it is that you stick your food in there, you start the freeze dryer, and you walk away. And that's it. You don't have to select anything. You don't have to uh, calibrate anything. You just put it in and you come back when it's done. Put a oxygen packet in there. We're reusing an old lid. Uh, we pull vacuum. And this part's completely automatic as well, where you you put on this cap, you put on a lid, and it pulls a vacuum and it seals that just so, you know, and, and now those oxygen absorbers will do the rest of the work of taking all the oxygen out of these, these uh, jars. So the one thing that we haven't done is we haven't done a lot of reconstituting. <laughs> so once we freeze dry it, the, when the time comes that you want to use it, <clears throat> you basically reintroduce water to uh, the, uh, the frozen items. And so we're just going to throw in just a little bit of carrots into this bowl of water and just see uh, what it does and maybe about how long it takes to, to uh, have the, the carrots reabsorb the water longer, but after about 10, 15 minutes, uh, you know, they're, they're full of water. I'm not sure if they're fully constituted, but... And it's, I could hear a crunch. Yeah, it, it's crunchy. It, it's a raw carrot, basically. We're, you know, this, we, we did cook them, yeah. so these aren't cooked carrots. They're, they're crunchy. They taste just like carrots. In fact, what I've noticed is that when you eat the freeze-dried items, the flavors intensify just a little bit. 
it, it has just a little bit stronger flavor. And I don't know why that is, but it, I've noticed that. And I wanted to, I wanted to just say the things that we've dehydrated right now, yeah. hand me the uh, yep. celery. Everything we have right here. Celery, onions, onion, um, yeah, ham. Ham or I like that. Chicken. Chicken. This, this uh, I need to do tomatoes. We need to do tomatoes. But this will make a delicious soup. And I want to reconstitute. <laughs> Can't forget your skin. We will make some more videos on this of us actually making a pot of yeah. soup. Yeah, right now we're just trying to figure out and understand. We're still learning. Uh, the process of freeze drying. Mm -hmm. And we haven't done any meals uh, prepared, pre prepared or prepared meals. And, uh, but Ellie season. wants to do a lasagna with us. Yeah. We're going to go visit her, and we will film some of that yeah. down there with but her. But what we focused on is using the ingredients that we would uh, like to have uh, on hand mm -hmm. uh, in, in in emergency mm -hmm. uh, to do a, a basic soup. And, and you know, soup you don't have to have much to survive. But with soup, and uh, we've got uh, we got two 500-gallon uh, water tanks. <laughs> That's a lot. So these here are 50-gallon drums that we have water uh, put in them, and we bought two of these 500-gallon tanks. These are huge. They are a lot bigger than what I was imagining. Uh, they are. Now, I'm six foot tall. I'm six foot tall, and this is how <laughs> tall they are. I mean, it's incredible how big they are, but it's nice to have the space to be able to have them, and then to be able to fill them with water and put a, a little spigot down there on the bottom to be able to drain them and to get access to the water as well. But there's a thousand gallons of water that we have. When, when we went to pick them up, I was a little embarrassed. Yeah, we didn't realize <laughs> so, 500 was that big, but it's okay, we've, but, got, a, we've yeah, got room for it. Yeah, we, hey. we've got room for a thousand gallons of water. If our city ever gets the water mains broke yeah. and we're out of water, we, neighbors yeah. come on over and shower. Yeah, we've, we've got plenty of water and uh, we've got you know, water in our um, uh, water heater. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I tried real hard not to say hot water heater mm -hmm. because that's redundant. But we've got water in our water heater. We've got, you know, some smaller containers, five gallon containers of water in our home. Um, Just be but, prepared. But we're, we're looking at this as kind of like an insurance that, you know, we spend thousands of dollars on home insurance, car insurance, mm -hmm. Uh, health insurance, things that, you know, we may or may not Thousands ever... Thousands of dollars a year. Yeah, a year. And that's, you know, one of the deterrents of freeze drying is that the initial cost of the freeze dryers uh, is, is a little bit steep. Uh, and I guess it's kind of relative, but what we're finding <laughs> is that Ellie has a freeze dryer. How often do you use a freeze dryer? We have a neighbor who has one. Uh, they don't use it that often. And so what we're finding, and, and I would suggest, is that if you wanted to get into doing the freeze drying, is get with family members, mm -hmm. especially if they live close. Mm -hmm. You go in and share that uh, initial yes. cost. And then, you know, take it for a couple of months. Uh, like we did. And, and another thing is that these ingredients right here, everything that we've done has been fairly inexpensive. Uh, ex especially when you can buy it in bulk at Sam's Club or Costco's. Um, and like the, the ham, that was left over from Thanksgiving and we thought, well, that's left over. Mm -hmm. And we may or may not get to it to eat it. Well, let's try freeze drying it. Well, now it's not been wasted. Well, and we people use Mylar bags to do it. We had jars. Use what you've got. You, you can fill a bottle with, with your product. And these are uh, raw eggs that have been froze-dried, freeze-dried. 
and you, you fill it up, you, you, you scoop out your contents and you fill it to the rim and then you go to the next bottle and you keep filling them in. Uh, but what I didn't realize at first is that you, you put your contents in your bottle, you put in vacuum seal it, uh, and then after a while, you know, it looks full, but if you, instead of shaking it, you can shake it a little bit, but I found that spinning it, you know, kind of half spins, quarter spins, and that'll help settle the content, you know, you know knock on it and get, get all that content to settle down. And you can see that, you know, you're leaving another inch or so in your bottles that you can top off so you don't need to use as many. You this don't have to. This one here, to, you worked it more. Yeah, and this one here is one that I've I worked really hard and I've packed it right to the top just so there's barely enough room uh, for one of those air packets. O oxygen packets. Oxygen packets. Yeah. But, and that goes for, I mean, even on this uh, ham, is it, I didn't, I didn't oscillate, I didn't shake it, I didn't, you know, help settle all the contents. Now you can sit there and you can crush your product into a paste, you know, into crumbs, yeah. but you don't really want to do that necessarily, but it still doesn't hurt. And I've, you know, figured that out pretty, pretty quick is that you just shake it, you just oscillate it back and forth and that'll help settle in the carrots and whatever you're using to help, you know, pack everything in nice and tight. So that was one of the, I think the best tips that I could give you on what we figured out during our uh, uh, packaging and, and bottling of the product. Well, and like I said, we've been bottling and we have things down on our shelves that we'll use in the next uh, six months to 24, 24 months. This is long-term storage. My guess and my hope is that <laughs> we'll never use this. <laughs> And, and we'll we'll use some of it for making videos on reconstituting and using it for cooking, but using it in a real life situation, I hope that we never yeah. Ever as have long to as I can it. buy eggs, I'm yeah. going to buy eggs. Yeah. But if I can't, at least I've got some eggs to cook yeah. with and to eat. Yeah. When when I was laid off uh, for nine months, that was one of the things that we had to go to the store for. We we had to go buy milk. We had to go buy eggs. We had to buy, you know, fresh, you know, fresh fruit and vegetables. And we didn't buy a lot of fresh fruit then either. Uh, but you know, it was we kept it at a minimum. But if we had had some of this here yeah. freeze dried, we could have gotten almost away because we do have powdered milk in our long term yeah. storage. But this will last 25 plus years. If you think Chad has done a good job of explaining the Harvest Right freeze dryer, give, it, <laughs> give Chad a thumbs up. Yeah. And we will see you again next time. And we'll do some more of these. If you, if, if you guys like them, we'll do some more. Thanks. Bye-bye.